We are back to the basics going over camera settings. The last video went over shutter speed, which measures the time that the shutter is open and letting light in. It's measured in fractions of one second. You let more light in, leaving the shutter open longer, so it's a slower shutter speed, and the number is smaller on your camera. While you're letting more light in, you're also allowing for motion blur from the subject, and once you go slower than 1 60th of a second, you'll begin to get camera shape. When you let less light in is when you leave the shutter open for a shorter amount of time. That means the shutter speed is faster and it's a larger number on your camera. And then you freeze motion. And here's a quick little clip of my camera uh, working the shutters. I forgot to add it into the last video, but here that is just so you can really see inside the camera body. Now that we have fully wrapped up shutter speed, let's talk about aperture. I'll first note that the shutter is in the camera body and aperture, which refers to the opening and closing of the diaphragm in the lens. So aperture in the lens, shutter in the camera body. And aperture is measured in f-stops, which are these numbers right here. When changed, aperture also controls light. So the wider or more open the aperture, the smaller the number, the more light comes in. So that means the more narrow or more closed the aperture is, the larger the number and less light comes in. Okay, now let's see what that looks like while we're shooting. Right now we're properly exposed, the notch is in the middle, and here is our aperture. It is set to 2.8. That is the widest that my aperture will open. Some go to 2.0, some go to 1.4, which is wider, but mine goes to 2.8. So as far as the aperture setting goes, we could not move it anymore to get more light. So this is where we're starting. We're wide open. We're gonna get this shot properly exposed. There it is. And we're gonna now close the aperture. Oops, that shutter speed. We're gonna close the aperture a little bit. The number is getting larger, but we are closing. I know it can get a little confusing. You think that the larger the number, the more open, but it's not. The larger the number, the more narrow your aperture is. So you're allowing for less light. So now let's see what that looks like. It's a little bit darker and our notch was over a little bit to the negative side. So that means, you know, we're losing light. Now let's go a little bit more narrow. We're at two now for the, the notch in the middle, our light meter, we're at negative two. Let's get that shot. It's way darker. And now we're properly exposed with our aperture at 5.6. So it isn't super narrow, but it's more narrow than the widest set setting, which is 2.8. So we're going to see what it looks like as we go wider and get more light in. Here we go. Get the first shot where it's properly exposed. Move it to 4.0, and we're getting a little bit more light in, a little bit overexposed. That shot, see it's way brighter. Now we're wide open as much as we can get with this lens. And it is way brighter. Okay, here's a recap of what we just went over and how adjusting the aperture affects the light. You'll notice that you see the same f-stops there with different effects, but that's because our starting points were different apertures, but both were properly exposed. So that does make a difference. And we'll go over more about how you adjust all three of the pillars, which is again, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, how you work with all three of them at the same time to get proper exposure and we'll go over th over that later but there's a recap of how aperture affects light
the same way that shutter speed affected light and motion, aperture affects light and depth of field, which at its most basic understanding is the wider the aperture, the blurrier the background, your subject is gonna stand out more because of how blurry the background is, like the portrait setting of an iPhone. And then the more narrow the aperture, the more clear and sharp everything in the photo is. The background, your subject, everything is way more clear. Okay, here's three photos that I took at different f-stops to show you how the depth of field is affected and what you're doing in the photo now remember this can get way more technical and everything but my main point of these videos is to show what's happening in photos and not taking a deep dive into technical things so as you can see in these photos of my sad, sad succulents, y'all pray for them, I need to water them. At F 2.8, right here, the background is blurry and the, a little bit of the edge of the bowl is blurry. At F 5.6, our edge of our bowl is getting a little sharper. The back here is still pretty blurry, not as blurry, but still a little blurry. Now F 11, we have a sharp edge around our bowl and this is getting way more clear so that is what is happening along with affecting the light you're also making like the picture overall more sharp when you go more narrow in your f-stops the number gets larger less light and more sharpness in your photo is your basic basic understanding of what's going on in a photo when you change aperture